Hey, how you doing today? I am Tequila Coleman in today's video. We're going to talk about the spirit of Pharaoh. Um, yesterday I was reading the book of Exodus, um, just reading, you know, the story about Pharaoh and how he was just refusing to let God's people go. And that's really because God kept hardening his heart because he had an unrepentant heart. So he had the door open to sin. You know, um, scriptures say a curse cannot basically come upon you without a cause. So because of his heart posture, because, you know, um, he, didn't, he didn't even know God. Right. Um, when you really study that, um, the scriptures in Exodus um, around that story, you know, you, you will begin to see a few things about Pharaoh. And so and, and let me just say this, because I've been in the Bible like every day, you know, lately, because I'm getting revelation, you know, the situation, the challenges we are finding ourselves up against in these God ordained love stories. The answer is in the Bible. Really, it really is. The answers are in the Bible. You can find your situation, your current situation in the Bible and God will reveal it to you. I have seen parts of my love story in Joseph, in the story of Joseph. I have seen parts of it show up in the story of Daniel. I'm seeing it in, in the this story with Pharaoh. You know, like our answers, and I'll also say, because God revealed to me the, um, the nine stages that God ordained believers' spouses go through, that's in the book of Matthew, right? So whatever you're going through in your God ordained love story, the answer is in the Bible. You just got to open up that Bible and read it and begin to allow God to speak to you concerning your situation, right? Um, so that he can give you the answer on how to, you know, overcome it. But as I was reading Exodus yesterday, uh, I was just laughing to myself because there was a few things going on. First, Moses, right? When, when God gave Moses the assignment to go to Pharaoh and, and, and tell Pharaoh, let my people go. Moses was very timid. You know, he was fearful. He had that stuttering um, issue with his, with his, with his voice or whatever. Um, he was lacking confidence, right? If I could just sum it all up, he was really lacking confidence. And that's how we are, you know, when we stepping into our calling and our assignment, uh, because this is something new, you know, we're not familiar with and it's something different. You know, in the beginning, you're going to be lacking confidence. Uh, you're going to be, you know, you're going to look more at your flaws and, you know, feel, feel unqualified. And the same thing with these God ordained marriages, you know, when God called you to stand, if you are dealing with the spirit of Pharaoh, you know, you could, you might run to God and say, God, how can I, you know, take on this? How can I even come up against this? You know, who am I? You might, respond the same way as Moses uh, responded. But, you know, Moses started off with, with this, a lot of doubt and lacking confidence, but towards the end, you know, he began to discern, he began to, you know, get more wisdom concerning Pharaoh and his confidence, you know, began to come through, right? That was one of the first thing I noticed as I was reading um, the book of Exodus, but Let's talk about this spirit of Pharaoh, because for some of you, that's what you're dealing with in your God ordained love story. You know, uh, whether the, the spirit of Pharaoh is in operation through a counterfeit, it could be operating through a mother-in-law, uh, a, a, a family member or a friend. You never know. Um, but this spirit of Pharaoh is an oppressive um, spirit. It is slaves. OK, your spouse. That's how they feel enslaved. They can never like break free because for some of you, your spouses have been trying to break free out of the uh, hands of the enemy. But for whatever reason, that enemy keep drawing them back in. For whatever reason, they keep on falling for the enemy, you know, manipulation tactic, right? That enemy is oppressing them. It's blackmailing them, you know, keep drawing them back in, right? And this is how this uh, spirit of Pharaoh operate. But um, we all know that Pharaoh had a hard heart because God kept on hardening his heart, but that was because uh, his heart postured. It was unrepentant. He had an unyielding heart. So, you know, and we've been talking about this, you know, scriptures say a curse causeless shall not come. So because his heart, you know, posture was unyielding, right? And you know, he, he, he's, you know, was very arrogant and proud, he had all these doors open to the enemy, 
God had a reason to keep on hardening his heart. Okay. Um, and we're going to talk about that later, but you know, the spirit of Pharaoh was very disobedient. Um, we all know that he was king of Egypt. Um, you know, he oppressed uh, the Israelite. He dealt with them harshly. He was critical of them, you know, calling them lazy. Um, he saw good as evil. He was even neglecting them, you know, when he took away, uh, I think it was the straw. And uh, he, 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 he was like, you y'all go ahead and, you know, find them yourself. Right. But he still was expected for them to get the work done. Right. Um, the spirit of Pharaoh, you know, that spirit will, you know, basically beat you down. OK, it finds faults in you, but not in themselves. Right. The spirit of uh, Pharaoh, it brings trouble upon the people. It's like a yoke. OK, that's how that's how the person who is up under this spirit feel um, like they in bondage, um, oppression, depression. Right. Um, like I said, it, it has an unyielding heart refusing to let go of uh, God's children. In our case, God ordained spouses or prodigal spouses. Um, the spirit of Pharaoh also operates in witchcraft, sorcery, um, black magic, things of that nature. Um, and it's a deceiving spirit, right? Um, there was a verse in there where, um, because there was so many times where God would inflict on Pharaoh different things, and then he would tell Moses, okay, okay, you know, I'm going to go ahead and let them go, only to um, change his mind after God, you know, after Moses prayed for Pharaoh, and then God, you know, took away whatever he afflicted him with. That's when he changed his mind. So that was a deceiving spirit. He had deceitful ways, that spirit. Uh, it's, that spirit has an unrepentant heart. It's very stubborn. It's a controlling, you know, manipulative spirit. It's very prideful, arrogant, right, uh, et cetera, et cetera. And so God stated, as I was reading, you know, God stated, he said, um, he said, God raised Pharaoh up so that God can show him his power and that God's name might be proclaimed in all the earth. It also goes on to say, that God hardened Pharaoh's heart so that God could perform miraculous signs among them and the people and replace the, and basically God was replacing the fear of the Lord um, in, back in Pharaoh. And he was really just showing Pharaoh that he's God, you know? And when he said, let my people go, that's what he means. You know, if I could just paraphrase the whole thing, that's basically what God was saying. And I want to say this because for some of you, you've been standing for a while and it feel like you're dealing with a stubborn spirit, right? It feel like, you know, like, like things just won't just turn around for you. But what you're really up against is the spirit of Pharaoh, right? Like I said, this spirit could be operating through um, the counterfeit. It could be operating through your, your prodigal spouse. It could be operating through uh, family members, mother-in-laws, whoever, right? Wherever you identify this fruit and where and who is operating through, that's the individual who got that door open to the spirit of Pharaoh. And so understand that it's not that it's not going to ever turn around for you. Just like God said in Exodus, God said, he said, I raised Pharaoh up so that God can show him his power and that God's name might be proclaimed in the in, in all the earth. So God, for some of us, we could be who's dealing with this spirit of Pharaoh. We dealing with it because God wants to reveal himself to your prodigal spouse and the enemies around your spouse. God wants to show out. He want to show his miraculous power, you know, uh, his signs, miracles and wonders. He want to show, he want to bring that fear of the Lord back to these people who don't fear God, he want to show them because it, every time when God, God was sending Moses and he was like, okay, take your staff. And, you know, he was telling him what to do with it. And, you know, one minute that uh, he was, the staff was turning the water into blood and the staff was doing all these other things. And Pharaoh's official, the magicians, right? Basically the witches and warlocks, right? they were doing the same thing, right? They they could do the same thing, you know, up to a certain point. 
And so it was almost like a mockery, you know, like a mockery, you know, in God's face, like, huh, that, like Moses, you ain't doing anything. We can do the same thing you're doing, right? So that lets you know that the fear of the Lord left Pharaoh and his officials, his people. So God said, okay, I'm going to keep hardening your heart because I, I'm trying to reveal some things to y'all. I got to show y'all who is God. I got to bring the fear of the Lord back in this particular, you know, situation. Right. And that's what we're dealing with. You know, these God ordained love story. God is placing them. He's placing the fear of the Lord back in prodigal. He's also, you know, revealing to the enemy. He's all powerful. The earth is the Lord. He's revealing these things to the enemy. And he's also revealing to the Lord. I mean, to the enemy that when God say, let my people go, that's what he means. Right. And so. It came a point where um, Pharaoh's official, one of Pharaoh's official, he said to Pharaoh, he said, do you not yet realize that Egypt is ruined? That let you know that Pharaoh had on blinders. See, the enemy, he's very crafty, but he's not all powerful. The enemy had Pharaoh blinded. And Pharaoh's pride in his stubbornness, even in his hard heart, refusing to let go of God's people, he couldn't even see that the more he held on to what God said let go of, he was ruining Egypt. Egypt was being ruined. Same, situ same situation is happening in your God-ordained love story. The enemy think they winning. They think they doing something by holding on to your spouse with the blackmailing, the manipulation, the spell, and not realizing as God is telling the enemy, let my people go, let my son go, let my daughter go. And the enemy continue to do these spells and um, all the stuff the enemy does, right? They don't even realize in the midst of all of this, they are destroying their relationship they thought they had with your spouse. They are also destroying the things they built. They thought they built with your spouse, but it was really built on sand. So all of that is coming, is coming down, right? They don't even realize each time God has to keep on coming back and telling, telling the enemy, let my son go, let my daughter go. God is burning away that connection. He's burning away those ties. He's burning away that attachment. He's burning away everything, but the enemy can't see it because the enemy is blinded. It's blinded. Right. So I was laughing, you know, <laughs> towards the end of the story, I was laughing because um, God, what God says, go his word. OK, you will bow down to God's word. OK, um, I know some of you be panicking, wondering, you know, well, what about my prodigal spouse free will? That free will is going to bow to God's will. OK. If God said that's your spouse and it's ending in marriage, that's exactly what's going to happen. Okay. So I just, like I said, I just wanted to talk about the spirit of Pharaoh. Um, you know, pray against this spirit, this controlling, manipulative spirit, this stubborn spirit, this hard hearted uh, spirit, you know, just, you know, unyielding heart, just refusing to bow down, you know, to the Lord. Pray against this spirit. Uh, over your uh, love story and just know that you have the victory in the end. God is allowing you to go through this because number one, he's revealing things to your prodigal spouse. And number two, he's showing the enemy that he is more powerful. And when he say, let my son and let my daughter go, that's exactly what he means. Okay. So, and in the process, he's tearing down what the enemy thought they built um, with your prodigal spouse. All right. So that is it. I am Tequila Coleman. I'll talk to you all real soon. Take care.